Hello and welcome to East Weymouth Congregational Church. Our church is online in the community these days. Our sanctuary is closed as we keep one another safe through this pandemic. If you need a prayer, if you need support, please do reach out to us. We are here for you. Today, I open with a very simple prayer. And I ask that, let us be in the spirit of prayer O oh Lord, in the worship ahead, may you help us love you more dearly, follow you more nearly, and see thee more clearly today and in the days ahead. And all this we pray through the beautiful name of Jesus. And the people of God say, Amen. Welcome. We hope you enjoy this worship.
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Today's scripture reading is taken from Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 through 13. If then there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the Spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, 
and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, just as, you, as, just as you have always obeyed me, not only in my presence, but much more now in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who is at work in you, enabling you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. The first shall be last, and the last shall be first. Our scripture lesson today is from the Apostle Paul's letter to the Philippians, chapter 2, where he speaks about imitating Christ's humility. And Christ's humility and leading, as Christ does, can seem so opposite with the way we define success and losing and winning in our society. Consider Bernard Eberds, head of WorldCom. He was known as one of the most religious CEOs in the high-tech sector of American business. And every board meeting began with a prayer. Eberds served as a deacon in his Mississippi Baptist Church, and he led a Bible study very competently. He was elected to the Mississippi Business Hall of Fame. He engineered the takeover of MCI Communications and was widely admired for his business savvy. And at his peak, he was listed as number 174 on the Forbes 400. But he also presided over the largest fraud in US history one that hurt investment funds and retirees across the country, $11 billion in accounting lies. And when he was uncovered, he told his congregation, and this is what really bites, more than anything else, he said, I hope this doesn't jeopardize my witness for Jesus Christ. Ebers now resides at Oakdale, LA Federal Correctional Institution, and at age 66, he can look forward to release only in July, 2028. Everything but his house and $50,000 of his assets were sold to pay back some of the millions his fraud cost investors. Winner or loser? The Apostle Paul writes, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of the others. Well, we have a situation on our hands in Weymouth we have a Bahamut gas plant that is about to operate October 1, 2020, even after six years of vehement opposition across Massachusetts at every level from all of our legislators of the South Shore, from the brave people of the South Shore who've been pushing against a gas company that finally got its way and probably considers itself to be a winner. This gas company, Enbridge, $67.5 billion in assets, considers itself the winner while it forces noxious and poisonous gas with the potential to explode and create massive destruction and loss of life. Friends, in God's kingdom, we know that Embridge is not the winner. This is not God's way. 
If there was a reality show called The Biggest Loser and it had nothing to do with weight loss, you might find that the all-time champion of losing according to our societal standards would be that of Jesus Christ himself. Now, let me explain. He was not voted supreme and he was not a dictator in control of others climbing his way to power. He ended his life, his human life, in humility. The death of a servant to others, broke, beaten. He made himself, as the Apostle Paul says, nothing by taking the very nature of a servant. He was crowned with thorns. And yet what the Apostle Paul also points out in this letter to the Philippians is that he was more, of course, than a Jewish rabbi, more even than a great man unjustly accused. He was God, the very second person of the Trinity. And God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He was the first one to rise triumphant from the grave to a new divinized life. God exalted him. The Apostle Paul tells us that the cross of Christ was not so much an instrument or a weapon of torture and execution as it was a throne of glory. So how do we become winners in God's kingdom? How do we avoid becoming losers like Embridge or others in God's kingdom? By taking up our cross, by avoiding sin and the near occasions of sin. You know, you and I both know what attracts us most to sinning in our lives and what tempts us for evil. Avoid it. Apostle Paul says. We become winners though, not just by avoiding evil, we must do good. Jesus told us, take up our own cross and follow him. He writes, the Apostle Paul writes, in your relationships with one another, have the same mindset of Christ Jesus. Have a heart. And this is a translation of the message of his passage. Don't push your way to the top, to the front. Don't sweet talk your way to the top. Put yourself aside. Don't be obsessed with getting your own advantage. Help others get ahead and forget yourself long enough to lend a helping hand. May we put on the mindset of Christ Jesus and lead humble and helpful lives. Let us pray. God of our past and our future, God of healing and hope, we come before you with grateful hearts, trusting that you walk with us through every situation. Today we pray for those facing danger and despair in these times, those living with hunger that never ends, those facing unrest and violence, those challenged by racial injustice, the coronavirus pandemic, and all those anxious about their future. And we pray for those who work to relieve suffering in these places and those working to bring justice and peace. Bless them all with your courage. And we pray for all those who work to bring healing and comfort in agencies which offer support and care in our community. 
Bless them all with your compassion. And we pray for all who offer guidance and support to face these challenges. And for those who lend skills in reconciliation or mediation. Bless all these with your wisdom and patience. God of our past and our future, God of healing and hope, help all of us engage each day with faithfulness. Guide us, encourage us, and inspire us to meet the challenges before us, and give us the commitment to keep following Jesus. Amen. joining us today friends i hope that this youtube channel is one that you can come back to over and over again please think about subscribing know that you are always welcome here we have a saying in our united church of christ denomination no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey you're welcome here so hope to see you again and know that you can always reach out to our church I leave you with a very simple benediction ascending forth on humility from the prophet Micah, who says, what does the Lord ask of us but this and only this? May you love God tenderly. May you act justly. And may you walk humbly with your God this day, now and forevermore. And may you go forward with the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. And the people of God say, Amen. God bless you. Bye.